National President of Mieti Allah, Social Cultural Organization Abdullahi Badejo, has stated that if the Nigerian authorities don't stop the operations of Amoteku and Shege Kalpasa, and that if the persecution of Fulanis in Nigeria is not put to a stop, his group would come up with its own security outfit to protect its members. He also expressed his displeasure as regards the arrest of some Fulani leaders over the recent crisis in Plateau State, where about 20 persons were killed. Still with me in the studio, uh, we have um, Larry Amenike. Thank you very much Thank for very staying. Much. And of course, Leonard Epute. Pleasure to have you still uh, with us. So, your thoughts. Let me start with you this time. Um, it's interesting, right, when you hear people that, like I was mentioning off air, people that are clearly prime beneficiaries of the Nigerian project issue threats that are inconsistent with that project like this. Um, and it's, it's, it's with a, a sense of responsibility and gravity that I'm going to make the next statement, that most Nigerians had never heard of Mieti Allah until Buhari became president. So this resurgence in their, in their power, this, this, this vocal energy that they now command is a function of, is direct, clearly a function of the fact that their brother is in power. And they are doing little to help the governance of their brother. But so, you, you, so, you so can't we, just, we, let's, 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 let's be careful here. These, yes. we have the southeast, yes. the southwest yes. coming up to say that they needed extra security. Yes. And considering the nomadic way these people live, yes, I, I, one I, I, would think that, I mean, if everybody's where, resorting to self-help, why should you exclude the Mieti that's, Allah? That's, that's where I'm coming to because I'm from Benue State, right? And I, did, I lived a lot of my life in the Middle Belt. Each time Fulani headsmen attacked, the same Mieti Allah will be quoted as saying, it is the security arm of the organization that rose to protect their people. So is it a name they want to put to it because they have already confirmed to us the existence of a military wing of Mieti Allah in their own words? So what, what new thing do they want to do? Secondly, comparing Amotekun to... Amotekun is for the protection for a, of a region, not a tribe in that region. If you come to southwest Nigeria, I am an Idoma person, I'm here in the southwest. If Amotekun is operating, it's like an estate security that we all have in Lagos. The security will be for everybody in this area, irrespective of tribe. But when you come up with utterances that seem to suggest that your tribe is going to now control the security outfit dedicated to protecting that tribe. We are not comparing, you are not saying the same thing. You are, you're, you're just in, in some sense saying you want to go openly lawless because we already know that the organization is borderline rogue at the moment, in my opinion. Okay, I'll, I'll still start with your initial reaction when you saw the story. Um, is it a fair position to take? Because we know that um, even uh, the North. If, even though we, there is no legal structure, as we're having with Amotrekun, there, there are moves to try and create their own security outreach. The Southeast is also considering it. Mianti Allah, though not a region, you know, they have quite a population. I, I think uh, it's just, uh, if I might take some certain things from what, you know, he said. I think uh, somebody is trying to put up some certain things that I don't know whether it's going to impact negatively or, or positively, you know, to us as a people or as a nation. One, you talked about Amoteku, the references they made, and the Shege Kasa of what, which is purely not an agenda, comprises of every other tribe within the North. And now somebody singly, you know, is trying to put up another business purely a business, a self-business, uh, as you mentioned it, that because of this and that, then it goes to show that uh, some certain people want to take up arms, you know, against the nation. And I think this by now, the, the security apparatus of this nation would have, you know, moved, you know, to put a stop to this madness. Because the, the, so many pronouncements has come from this organization, especially 
when it hurts Nigerians most, especially when you hear about killings in Benue in so many other places in, in the East and so many, and these guys will come out to make a pronouncement as far as we are concerned, Tibet, nothing, no serious thing has been done by the government to checkmate their excesses. I don't know what he meant by he's going to start his own security, but I, I think if he's going to start from them, you know, you, you, you talked about the Southeast. No, the Southeast has not formed anything for this moment. This governors of the Southeast, you know, mooted an idea that they believe in the state police project of the federal yeah, government. Yeah, we're, we're, we're saying practically the same thing because no. they came up after the Amoteku, Amoteku, other regions started saying, okay, we're mm -hmm. going to consider this, even though there is no legal framework. Even the Amoteku is still in the pipeline. Nothing, mm -hmm. I mean, aside from the public hearing, which brings me to my next question. Public hearing for the Amoteku bill. Um, Mieti Allah said they were going to attend. Um, I was trying to check through some of the news stories to see if they actually attended the public hearing. But um, I think a Muslim group attended the um, hearing. Their idea is to express their concern about Amoteku and to ensure that it is not just for a certain group of people basically to make their contribution. Do you think that will amount to anything? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. First of all, let's understand that in the southwest of Nigeria, um, the Muslim religion is the dominant religion. That's the blunt truth by population. They are more in number than the Christian. So there is no suggestion that Amotekun has a religious agenda. Secondly, any fool any man that is living in the southwest of Nigeria and is law abiding, will be protected by the same security apparatus called Amoteco. Let's, let's also understand the base for this. The premise is that the existing security structure has failed us. Basically. Protecting lives and properties is impossible for our existing security apparatus. And we as a people have a right to life. And the extension of that right is that we must do everything within our means to collectively protect our communities and our lives. And this is what is happening. It has always existed. There are village vigilantes. In the north, they are littered all over the north, even recognized and paid for by the governments in the north. So it is just that it is now, it, 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 there is now a more wide ranging um, f um, um, focus to this to say, why do it in Lagos State alone? Why don't we come together as a group and just have have a bigger budget, a bigger pot, and collaborate even more. This is clearly a referendum on the policing in Nigeria. And to the extent that the policing remains as it is, any group that wants to protect their environment is free, to, should be free, must be free to do so within the boundaries of law. OK, let, let me go to other aspects of the statement made by the uh, chairman, he, he first off he talked about that if they are pushed to set up their own security outfit, um, nobody can control them because nobody knows how many Fulanese there are in Nigeria. Uh, he said uh, we are more than every tribe in this country. We are in every corner. He went on to say that um, should Nigeria break up, it wouldn't affect the Fulanese um, in any way. Cumulatively. Does this bother you that the statement is coming from someone who should be exercising some sort of caution? This is pure recklessness, you know, and uh, you know it goes to support some certain narrative from some certain you know corners that uh, is like the, the central government has some certain special interest on those people, and they are so favorable to whatever pronouncement they are making. You know, is a suggestion from so many colors. And when you look at what is happening, I don't think any other tribe, call it maybe a Feni Fere, call it Odua People's Congress, call it IPOB, call it uh, Masob, call whatever name you can call them, can come out and make this kind of pronouncement. And by now, you will not hear that the security, the police, or maybe the DSS has not arrested that person. So I think, you know, a lot of things need to be looked at by the people. And the, the sympathy these guys are enjoying from the central government, controlled by our president, is, is something that uh, need to give everybody concern. Because the boldness of which they always approach issues, as far as I'm concerned, is unacceptable. 
by every ramification, by every standard, by every consideration. And they continue to make those, those reckless you know, pronouncements and nobody's doing anything. One, you are talking about Mieti Allah. This purely cattle rearers, herdsmen. And you are telling me as an able man, you know, that you have a population that you everywhere. Are you everywhere more than Igbos? You know, so these are things that sometimes people, you know, say that some of us will find it so childish. I think that man is excited. And his excitement is because, basically because he has a very big support from the center or from the higher authorities. If not, I don't think some of this regular pronouncement coming from Mieti Allah. Who is Mieti Allah? You talk about Fulanis. No. If, uh, you know, sometimes when, we, when they talk and you want to put it up to mean all Fulanis, so certain people yeah. always We certainly say know no. that there, there are a certain group of people that, I mean, it doesn't so, reflect. So, yeah, so it doesn't reflect that this... The, all these pronouncements are coming from all the Fulani. So we must okay. be careful. This takes and me to another aspect yes. of a concern that he expressed. He felt that the, these people are hated. That they are hated because they want to... I mean, there are people who are... Um, uh, what, what's his language now? Um, he says that uh, they are blessed people who are managing themselves, but they are hated by Nigerians who do not want to take their eyes off them. Is there a way? Is that a general perception or there is something wrong with this kind of thinking? No, the statement is inherently inaccurate and it's, 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 the, it's the rambling of an excited, uh, this, this, I don't know the word, disgruntled. I don't know, he shouldn't okay, be disgruntled, let's be kind right? With words now. But, no, but the man it's, doesn't it's, deserve it's, any it's, kind it's, 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 it's historically incorrect. Okay, so let me give you an example. Till date, there is no single Muslim in my village. Nobody <laughs> speaks Hausa in my village unless you have traveled to live in the north, right? But my father's younger brother, his name is Garba. Another one is called Anebi. They were named after Fulani people who settled in our community and were friends with my grandfather. They lived there for years. What do you mean hated? They were beloved by our people. There was a symbiotic relationship where you have vested your crop, you allowed the cow to go in to do the gleaning, and then their droppings form manure. And this was a practice for years. People scrambled to give the Fulani settlements because when they move, that place becomes really, really fertile ground for the cultivation of greens. Nobody hated the Fulanese until a generation came that made themselves hateful and spiteful. When nomads begin to take lands and rename villages, they are no more nomads. They have become invaders. And they, we need to name them. And I speak, you see, the, a majority of the Fulani population in Nigeria are brilliant people. I grew up in the north. I have a lot of them as friends. We have these conversations, and we are on the same side of the divide. For their sakes, I would like to make a pronouncement that, please speak out. When these guys wake up with this momentary madness and say some of these things, you well-meaning people that know me, that I know you, that are great proponents of the Nigerian dream, please speak out and the press people. Give those people more voices, Voice. Fulani voices. If there was a Fulani person on this table today, we would have been saying exactly the same things. Okay, this is the situation we are in. We allow negativities to resound while the, the, the majority, you know, the consensus mm. argument that is more positive, more progressive, isn't given sufficient voice. All right, let's uh, look at the reactions that has come up um, on this matter. The pan Yoruba Social Political Group, Afeni Ferre, the spokesman, has come up to say that there is need to examine um, the stability of the leadership yeah. of Mieti um, Allah. Um, I think that goes to show what I wanted to, the impute I made just a few seconds you know, back. Because one, some thousand times you look at people, just like he rightly said, the coverage being given to these guys, you know, when he used their word, he said uh, we should be careful with words. When you see a man that continuously, you know, almost beat this ambassador of the vision of hatred 
among his people and is creating some certain things that we, we, we never expect, even regardless of the current situation we are facing, the security challenges. I think it's rather unfortunate. And I think the statement, you know, coming from, uh, I think you said a Fanny Ferry, right? Yes. You know, uh, for me, it's very correct because one, people need to stand up and take away the voice given to this character. This character need no respect. This character needs to be checkmated by the authorities. I'm talking about the DSS that, you know, that are always quick to take some certain actions. I'm talking about the police. It is high time the president himself, in any camouflage or whatever anybody is trying to put up, Nigerians are getting tired of the reckless abandon that this Mieti leadership always act and make pronouncements. It is unfair to the sensibility of the average Nigerian that a, 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 a microscopic section, you know, of some certain people will be given this kind of voice and they are trying to press it on the average, or on all Nigerians without anybody saying anything about them. I, I think it's rather unfortunate and it's unacceptable and the authorities need to sit up to, to put a stop to this madness coming from some of these characters. It, it, it is not fair to other Nigerians. A final thoughts, Leonard, on this. Final thoughts, we need to be careful when we say the heavens must fall. Um, the IPOB will say we will divide Nigeria if X does not happen. The Niger Delta militants will threaten to destroy Nigeria. Mieti allies threatening to destroy Nigeria. Boko Haram has already destroyed so, sections of Nigeria, and our political elites are actively involved on a daily basis in the destruction of Nigeria. Now, when this heaven falls, let us remember that we all live under the heavens. And it must be our job to responsibly support this heaven so that it will not fall. Because we don't just live for the moment. We have children who will curse us for our irresponsibilities in their time. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the thank program. You Your thoughts are appreciated. And of course, thank you for staying with us thus far. We will take a short break for PLOS Report. And when we return, I will give you my take. The Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has called on President Mohamedou Buhari to carry all Nigerians along irrespective of tribe and religion. The CAN Vice President, Caleb Akima, spoke to Plus TV Africa in Abuja at a reception organized for victims of the ongoing insurgency in the Northeast. He called on President Mohamedou Buhari to strictly adhere to the tenets of the Constitution and embrace national character. There is a, a lot of talk going about this, this evil that is happening in Nigeria, but I think that uh, there should be proper analysis that Nigerians may know uh, what percentage of the problem we are suffering that is religious, what percentage is um, political, and, and others if they be. Government should heed the call of Nigerians uh, about treating the provisions of the Constitution with respect. The, the fact that somebody is, is a president in this nation does not give him the right to just behave any way, any way he likes. And so uh, the, 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 the president must go back to the Constitution and must know that he is president over all Nigerians, not over a selected group uh, of religionists or you know, uh, political entities in this country. And for decency, order and decency to be restored to our nation, if the constitution is there to guide us, why not follow the constitution? To say the situation in Edo State APC is appalling is to put it mildly. I worry about the effects of this fight on the good people of the state and the terrible precedents being set by the two key leaders there. The honours now lies with the national leadership of the party to sit up and address this matter before it escalates even further. And that's my take tonight. Thank you for your time with us in the programme. It returns same time tomorrow. Meanwhile, to find us on social media at Plus TV Africa to share your thoughts and issues raised here. Until I see you again, please be well.